Um, hey folks, so today I'm going to do a quick case study on the Thar Desert. Um, now I just have to start this quickly by saying um, this is not a topic that I teach my students or my colleagues teach um, our students. So if you're from my school, do not do this case study, okay? Because uh, we do cold environments instead. So there's optionality in this one. Uh, you can either do hot deserts or cold environments. So if your school does hot deserts and this is what you need, then I'm, yeah, this is here for you. But if you're in my school, then please don't use it. So the Thar Desert. Um, this is a desert to the east of the Indus River in northwestern India and southeastern Pakistan. It is known as the Great Indian Desert. It is a huge desert. And it's also the most, pop sorry, I'll say that again, the most densely populated desert in the world. So if you draw a stick figure and let's have a big arrow to remind ourselves, it's got the most people. So it's the most densely populated desert in the world. So there's something happening here that's working really well um, because humans have managed to settle and not just settle, but actually there's been some great opportunities as well. Um, so if we split the page, if we just draw a line like this, okay, and we're going to have a big, um, let's put our opportunities here. So yeah, big sort of smiley face. And this is the kind of GCSE question you could get, you know, what opportunities are there in this desert environment um, or what challenges are there and, and how, they, how are they managing, okay, to live there and what, what's available. So there's a lot of opportunities. You might think of a desert as just this arid, you know, dry land with nothing going on, but that's not the case, okay. There are huge opportunities um, and probably the biggest one um, if we put this one in first it, and put a pound sign because it's making them lots of money is mineral extraction. Okay. Now there's various minerals that you can extract from the ground in a desert um, but three of them, I'll give you three examples, is gypsum, uh, limestone which is you know, really useful, used to make lots of things, and marble. Okay, so those three are the ones you're looking at for mineral extraction. So that's giving people jobs, it's contributing to the local economy and improving people's quality of life by having that work. And it's generally kind of low skill, so it's going to captivate a lot of people um, in that involvement. Now the other one, another pound sign, and, and this is really helpful, this is tourism. Now you've probably all seen desert safaris, I am... Am I going to draw a camel? I haven't, haven't even practiced this. Right. Um, let's draw a camel. Okay, so it's got kind of a hump. Yeah, and then a long neck like this. Oh, it looks like a dinosaur. Oh, this is terrible. This is terrible. Okay, never mind. Apologies to all camels out there. Um, there we go. Oh, that, that is bad. Okay. <laughs> I'm actually going to try and make it even worse. I'm going to put a stick person on top. There we go. So, um, here we go. We've got our camel riding going on. So, this is um, a camel safari. Okay. So, you can take uh, a camel sort of desert safari and go and visit uh, and see the desert by camel. Obviously, they have amazing adaptations as well, which might be a question that comes up, you know, so you might want to talk about their, can't draw it on here, but um, like long eyelashes that they have. They have two sets of eyelashes. They can independently close their nostrils from the sand. And let's not forget that they can store fat, not water, fat in their hump so that they can um, survive without food and water for a while. Um, now, this one might surprise you. The next one is farming. Now, it's a desert environment. So these plants, I'm just going to draw a plant with some leaves. Um, these are not your usual plants, okay? Anything that's grown in the desert, and all sorts of things are, 
you know, potato plot, pota lots of potatoes actually are grown in, in the desert. Um, as long as there's irrigation, so the ability to water them. Um, so plants like maize, maize is used to make cereals, bread, um, wheat is the same. So really useful, staple uh, crops these are. Um, and cotton, you know, for growing uh, cotton. So cotton becomes uh, clothes, it can become denim. So these are things that you can grow. And let's not forget, and I'm not going to draw another cow, but um, cattle. Okay, you can draw a cow if you want to. Um, so the grassy areas, they can irrigate and they can have cattle. These cattle are not like your British dairy cows. They are tough, hardy creatures. Um, and this is all using irrigation. Now that word's quite important. Let's draw water droplet. Okay, now irrigation is where you set up a watering system. So you're just watering the plant, not the ground, because evaporation is high and we will just lose that water otherwise. And the irrigation comes from the Indira uh, Gandhi Canal. I think you'll need to know that. Okay, so there's a canal that feeds the irrigation systems that allows them to farm. Now, all of those things, mineral extraction, tourism, farming, they are all going to boost that local economy and improve people's um, opportunities and quality of life. But, okay, there are some challenges and they are not small ones. So if we put with a worried face and put challenges. Now, just like in a cold environment, the extreme temperatures in a desert are a really limiting factor. So if we draw a little thermometer like this, okay, and it can get to around about 47 degrees Celsius. Okay, now that's, that's really hot. Um, that is tarmac melting kind of heat. Um, so we want to say extreme temperatures um, impact human survival. Okay, and that is that is no joke. You know, the reality is in those extreme temperatures, you can get heat stroke and die. Okay, so there's there's real risk, and you can't do things. Um, you can't do manual labour and things like that as easily in those temperatures. So one of the things it does is it limits uh, tourism. So nobody wants to visit in the summer months. Uh, so they, it limits tourism to the cooler, not cold, but cooler months only. Okay. Um, other thing it does is it can, I did mention it can, so if we draw a road, okay, um, it can melt tarmac, uh, literally melt it. I mean, in this country, tarmac has been known to melt in the summer and we haven't seen temperatures that high. We've, you know, highest we've had is about 37, about 10 degrees less, but that can melt tarmac. Um, it can, if you draw a water droplet, they cross through it, it can cause water shortages, and the reason for that is evaporation rates. So, water is evaporating basically quicker than um, we can store it. Okay, um, and there is another challenge is this lack of accessibility. If you think about the sand, it's very difficult to cross sand, you need roads. If the tarmac's melting, roads are difficult to use. So there's a lack of access, which actually, and I'm not drawing another one, but um, can mean places are only really accessible by camel. Okay, so we're just going to put that in there. Many places um, become hard to access. Or only, oh, only by camel. Camel, there we go. Right, there's just... One more thing, which I should have included. I'm going to squeeze it in there because I don't want you guys to be short on your um, on your case study material. Um, but just, if you can, down here, if you've got any room, if you can draw a lovely big uh, wind turbine, okay, like this. 
with its lovely blades. There we go. And basically the Indian ones, they look a bit more like this. Ours are a bit more, um, so that you can see through them basically. But if you can put uh, another pound sign, okay, from energy, okay? Now you would obviously think solar, everyone thinks solar, and it is solar as well, but it is from wind, okay? This deserts can be very windy places, nothing really to break up that wind. So yeah, if you could please put um, wind power, and if you just draw a sun, okay, and put, and solar. Okay, so I feel like that's, I know it's a brief overview, but I think that gives you everything you need for that case study. All the opportunities, all the challenges, and um, yeah, I'll give you certainly something to go on. So as I've, it's been a popular request, so hopefully that's helpful. All right, good luck.